Yes, good evening. I welcome you all as attendees here. Thanks for your enthusiasm to join in with the uh, mission of sustainable growth and sustenance. I welcome you all once again. Uh, indeed, today's webinar has been organized with the permission of the uh, university president of Bhopal Nobles University, Professor Naresh Bahadur Singh Sa, and with the help of registrar,
I'm so sorry. Are all the speakers here? Dr. Devrat? Dr. J. Pavitha? Yes, ma'am. Please turn on your camera. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Devra Sharma? Then Dr. Sri Ranjini? Dr. Sri Ranjini? I'm here, ma'am. All right. I'm here. So, I welcome you all once again. I'm so sorry. Uh, no problem. Just there was some technical glitch going on within my computer. There are no, there are so many experts and interceptors in between. <laughs> I don't know what they do with interception, especially in these webinars. All right, so let's get back to the uh, topic here. Today we have decided to hold a webinar on 8th uh, March in uh, celebrating International Women's Day. And I thought that's very current and emerging and creating a lot of, you know, spurt um, with regard to business, economy, finance, entrepreneurship. So it's absolutely a live topic, climate champions. And uh, I felt that it would relate to your women development and entrepreneurship also. So uh, amongst uh, the speakers that I have got some very good, uh, uh, you know, participants. And there are four speakers here. Of course, I would be first welcoming our uh, chair of today's session, Dr. Sri Ranjini Moksha Gundam. She's from uh, uh, Faculty of Management, and she is from Mysore University, Bangalore. Then our another speaker is Mr. Anand, very enterprising, and he's also a mentor, project head. He's from you know uh, a big, vast group. Uh, that is very much well known in southern India and Kerala, its root place uh, of this organization. And it is Bring Back Green. And it is being, uh, I think, uh, under the proprietorship of Green Army International, uh, located at Trivantram, Kerala. And Aj, he will be the first speaker of today. Then uh, there will be Jay Pavita. Uh, she's an uh, assistant professor uh, from Bharat University, Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research. Uh, she's located at uh, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. I, <clears throat> I really uh, extend my thanks to Jay Pavita. She volunteered to speak here and with short notice, she has come uh, to participate. Then our fourth speaker is Dr. Devrash Sharma. Uh, he's uh, from Rajasthan. Uh, located in uh, one of the government colleges of the district Dosa, but that college is uh, in affiliation to, um, you may say it comes in the uh, affiliation of University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. So there are four speakers, but I don't know where is Dr. Devra Sharma. And there are so many interesting, uh, you know, enthusiasts who would like to listen on uh, that what's this climate champion about how women are working into it uh, because traditionally they have been knowing about how women the have been preserving conserving uh, nature and looking after the environment biodiversity flora and fauna so let's listen to these guys and the ladies you know, how they are going to elaborate upon the today's uh, theme so I first of all welcome Mr. Anag. Please take the platform. Yeah, so uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Dr. Jayashree, for having me here. And uh, it, it's a great privilege uh, to speak on uh, gender and climate change or women, the role of uh, women and the issues faced by the majority population in the country or uh, specifically in the world as such. For instance, it is 1,100 women per 1,000 men. So this is the majority community in the country presently. But uh, unfortunately, in all sectors of the world and in all sectors of the population or all sectors of the field, uh, the women community is suffering uh, a lot. So similarly, in the case of climate change or uh, an issues faced by uh, uh, climate or uh, global warming or disasters, it is women who is unfortunately suffering the lot. 
so uh, when we are discussing about uh, the issues or the role of women that has to be played for climate activism or climate action uh, we are discussing in the wake of uh, un women's uh, commission on uh, status of women's 66th session un women's commission on status of women's 66th session where uh, the youth the forum happened on uh, last saturday and i was also a participant of that and my ngo will be where i will be representing as a project head of bring back green this on the 17th the ngo representation is also happening and uh, that is uh, fortunately and thankfully we are also participating so why is why had a commission or why had uh, the organization which is working for gender equality working for the status of women working for the rights of the women why are they why have they taken this topic that is gender and climate or women and climate or climate change and women it is because uh last year's ipcc report and this year's ipcc report i will be speaking on that um, on more uh, on ipcc report they have said that the climate change has is been is been tremendously affecting in the all population of the world and it is affecting the community in a large scale and as women who are the uh, unfortunately or fortunately uh the stakeholders of household stakeholders of all sorts of things they will be the most affected people okay for instance uh as uh, dr jayashree said uh, uh, our organization is predominantly working in kerala and uh, when we talk about disasters you must be noting that states like kerala or states like uttarakhand uh the states have, are are which is not actually disaster prone or which is not actually uh, the sufferers of climate change or uh, similar things they are tremendously uh, disaster prone now for instance since 2018 kerala is suffering from flood landslide 2019 unfortunately we faced flood and landslide and 2020 the world as such faced pandemonium is suffering from pandemonium is not survived yet from pandemonium but we faced uh, climate change issues global warming issues disasters so is the case with 2021 as well at uh, uttarakhand from 2014 it is facing issues so if in every loops and corners of the world specifically in the countries as such we are facing lots of issues and who is the stakeholders unfortunately who is the stakeholder of, of these issues we can we know that uh, when drought when drought occurred who were whenever drought is occurring for instance there is a district called palakkad in kerala every year drought will be there and who will be the responsible person we know we know the un, uh, infamous pictures when a drought occurs women will be carrying so many pots on their heads and they will be walking so that is the issue that is the issue whenever an issue of re related to climate change is happening women will be the stakeholders of all those issues they will be suffering all those issues so from this year onwards un women's uh, 66 con uh, 66 conference they took it is a, a month long program started from 5th of this month and which will be ending the uh, last last week of this month so they took the that they took the topic called as climate change disaster and women so that is why and and i'm so happy that a college in the uh, country is have taken this topic for a discussion on women's day so uh, straightly covering the uh, integral ipcc report and the role of women so uh, I, i i thought of giving a small introduction of uh, a small introduction on ipcc actually i i'm not sure, i'm unsure how many of you have gone through this report of at least how many of you have heard of this report but this is the this commission or this uh, report or the authors of this report last year and this year why they inter, what the intention of this report and what they intended through the release of this report is that to awaken the people who think that climate change is not real or climate change is not happening this report is actually shocking and is giving you know lots of information about the issues that has been happening so ipcc that is the intergovernmental panel on climate change the intergovernmental 
panel on climate change is an authoritative and influential source of reports on climate change. So the authors, as I said, the authors of this report include scientists from around the world. We, we have actually uh, the secretary of um, no secretary, the director of uh, Indian Sustainable Development Goal, sorry, Institute of Sustainable Development Goal of India, who is also the member of advisors to uh, Honorable Prime Minister of India. He's also one of the member of this uh, IPCC report uh, this year. Okay, so they have raised so many questions which have been raised about the dominance of specific disciplines in the report. You know, whenever this uh, climate change and all has been discussing, so they will be talking about the scientific things. This is happening, that is happening. Uh, this many uh, uh, percentage of gases have been uh, uh, raised, and these are the gases that have been released. So these are the things that usually been discussed. But actually, from last year onwards, they included the economic aspect, social aspect, because as as I was speaking earlier, this uh, the issue of uh, climate change is hap happening to the. It is actually becoming intersectional. As we say, the gender inequality is intersectional. The caste issue is there. The climate climate issue has also been become an injustice. We, uh, usually what we call as climate justice. So for that achieving the climate justice, they included gender into what, as one of the socio-economic political topic in the IPCC report. So uh, uh, 60s before this IPCC report release. So in this uh, report, uh, the authors actually tried to analyze the the unexamined issues of gender and IPCC, looking at the views about the experience, the barriers to full participation, not only as a woman, but also to the intersection of nationality, as I said, nationality, uh, race, etc. So actually what is happening? There is no policy. There is no policy where the, of course, we have a Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. We have a Ministry of, um, uh, in every state, we have Department of Climate Change and Environment. There are so many departments, there are so many ministries. But there is no certain policy. So there has to be set of policy to brief, to address some of the most pressing policy issues concerning gender and climate change by drawing the extensive experience of each contributing partner organization. There should be the interventions of um, uh, you know, the, this um, uh, pollution control board. We know that there are state pollution control board, there are national pollution control board. There have to be interventions of pollution control board. There have to be interventions of energy management centers. We have energy management centers in every state. How many of us know that there is energy management center in every state? So there has to be interventions of energy management centers. Uh, for instance, in Kerala, we have several missions. I did the Kerala mission, which is um, what is Haridha Kerala mission? Green Kerala mission. Okay. And Shujito mission. Um, Shujito mission means uh, cleanliness mission. So we have certain missions in Kerala. They have, it, it should be a multi, as we call it research, multidisciplinary or transdisciplinary research. The, the, uh, the action for so climate actions should be intergovernmental. Uh, that is what this report say. Because gender is actually a pertinent issue in climate change as i said for instance uh, uh in my book in my book called um, um uh coastal erosion and uh, southwest coast of india there was a book that i also read. so uh, where i also i mentioned that uh if, wherever a disaster happened for instance a coastal erosion is a one of the pertaining issue in kerala every year since 20 years coastal erosion is happening almost all the coastal areas of kerala are being drawn Almost all the coastal erosion, coast, coastal areas in Kerala are eroded. So who is the uh, who is the unfortunate beneficiary of these disasters? It is women, uh, because they have to look after the household, they have to look after the children. They are suffering uh, this coastal erosion. Men will of course be going out and working. They will be able to go out and they will be able to work, some, go for some other jobs. Women, unfortunately, who do not have so much of skill or they do have skill, but they're not trained properly. So those people who are not trained properly, they don't know any other job other than selling fish. They would, they are not trained to go to uh, sea or uh, fetch the fish. They are not trained that much. They do not have their, they are not trained to have those vocational, vocationally. So what they, 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 they are unfortunately becoming the, uh, they're unfortunately be, uh, becoming the financially dependent to their male counterparts. They are unable to look after their children of their own. They are again 
you know marginalized marginalized to the uh, household activities of the uh, houses so this is what is happening so uh, what through discussion what our hope is that to concise emp concise and empirically grounded recommendations in e in all our speeches as uh, dr jayshree said we, there are four speakers so what we have to do is we have to brief all the issues and we have to provide proper guidance to policy makers or programmers to better identify that is what yesterday uh, honorable prime minister also said to identify and address gender issues in climate policy action for instance every every state is having having a uh, 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 planning board we can give suggestions to the planning board okay so that that should be because we represent a diverse group of organizations working on gender and climate change issues for instance there are academicians i am an ngo worker uh, the organizer itself is an academician uh, there are managed and that too from different departments uh, the organizer department is an english department and the, the chair is a management person so we are representing diverse organization working on different different aspects so what we can do is we range it from our own research centers or our own like we can quote from united nations unef 5.2 got over very uh, very recently we can take their, their their recommendations as well so what we have to do is to collect all the things that we are uh, talking about because almost every local seed system from selection to storage protection because women farmers play key roles in local seed systems through they though they are actually often overlooked by researchers the what what uh, what impact is actually this researchers bringing into the root level they are not bringing any sort of benefits to the uh, to the people who are working there so climate change is putting pressure on farmers as well uh, i don't know how much farmers are women in other states of kerala uh, kerala sorry india uh, kerala which is actually becoming a consumer state very recently since uh, a decade uh, maximum Kerala is becoming a consumer state. It's no longer a you know agrarian state. It is a consumer state now. But there are farmers, and uh, there are a large number of women, especially the old age population. When the statistics say 13.3 percentage of the uh, women far uh, women farmers are above 60, who are uh, actually uh, the uh, the old age population of the country. So what we actually can do is that we can put the, the researchers, uh, uh, the talks, the suggestions that has been coming up in the uh, talk to a uh, substantive document. And we can actually recommend all the policy framers and stakeholders to come up with necessary suggestions. OK, uh, so this is what I would like to uh, give as a uh, introductory talk. Uh, I think we can have more discussions as questions. Also, I would like to uh, I would like to end with one point, uh, I, which I actually forgot to mention. Okay, fine. Okay. Listen, listen. You can carry on uh, ten minutes more if you have your organization. Discuss about your organization, about its network, about its association. Elaborate it. Take ten minutes more. Uh, so as uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. So as uh, Jesh, Dr. Jayashree said, um, uh, our organization is working with several gender aspects as well. For instance, uh, the first and foremost motto of our organization is it, uh, we have five major mottos. Uh, one now meant that is gender and climate change. And there is something known as sustainable menstruation. I don't know how many of you know about sustainable menstruation. Sustainable menstruation is an activity where uh, we all know that uh, menstruation, uh, menstrual products are basically uh, the uh, menstrual products are basically uh, uh, the plastic products. You know, uh, the napkins, uh, the, uh, the sanitary napkins are basically plastic products. So, sanitary nap this plastic sanitary napkin as a plastic product takes 500 years to decay. You know, 500 years to decay. So uh, for this reduction, for this reduction in the society, what we have to do is we have to switch the products that a menstruator use to many other sustainable menstrual products. We have period panties, we have menstrual cups, we have cloth pads. We have to increase the use of these sustainable menstrual products 
and encourage the menstruators by providing awareness. So what my organization, Bring Back Green, does is that we provide um, awareness programs through educational institutions, through our social media handles, and through a, every other uh, possible uh, framework. For instance, uh, the first National Climate Change Conference in India was held at QSAT, Cochin University of Science and Technology, uh, which uh, in Kochi, uh, and through that, one of the major uh, session that we had was that sustainable menstruation, which was actually before Corona, before COVID-19. And uh, through this pro through this uh, project, what we intended is to sensitize the uh, sensitize the population about sustainable menstrual products, so as to reduce the impact of sanitary napkin that has been making in the society, and bring up the uh, sustainable practices as the motto of this uh, uh, um, uh, women's day goes uh, gender equality for sustainable tomorrow sustainable tomorrow is not just equality but it intends the society to give more sensitization sensitization about the practices so that is what sustainable menstruation is so i think with that i can uh, wind up for the time being and uh, bring in more discussions through question and answer sessions Madam, you are on mute. Sorry. I thank you for elaborating upon the necessary hygienic needs that have been taken up by your foundation and uh, how uh, not only that, that you have been also looking into the age factors of women who at varied stages can contribute as an entrepreneur and can uh, also, you know, supervise or be, uh, be the proprietors, etc. So totally your focus is on that. Indeed, the men are there in their families to uh, uh, give them, you know, finance, etc. or the support. Uh, I'll, I'll leave you here, but you don't go away because I would like that certain questions should come up for you because you have not given us the alternative realities uh, that your foundation is uh, facing uh, in, uh, in despite you know some kind of expected realities there are certain expected realities and there are certain alternative realities so how did they are the balance oscillation you have been doing uh, between these two gaps okay so this is a question that you have to answer so meanwhile I invite our next speaker, J, Dr. J. Pavita, to please take the platform and lead the discourse. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you all for the opportunity given we to me. See you. Am, I, am I audible, ma'am? Uh, we can't see you, Lalit uh, J. Pavita. My video is on. Your video is on? Okay, yes, let's check. Let me check. Um, Maybe some network issues. Okay. Don't don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. I just check uh, how you are there. Yes, we can see you. Okay. Uh, so as uh, the first speaker sir has uh, told, uh, very elaborative on what is the gender uh, inequality and the climate change. Uh, but my views is on the woman entrepreneurship. So developing this uh, woman entrepreneurship is. Uh, uh, coming inside the uh, scenario in recent days and uh, regarding this biodiversity uh, as sir in the last phase he has uh, explained on this uh, NGO relating to his uh, field of the sanitary napkins so this will encourage uh, the uh, degradable uh, environment towards the sanitary napkins and more of the uh, awareness towards this uh, sanitary napkins and uh, uh, more of the women entrepreneurs has to come forward uh, to start up uh, this entrepreneurial journey. And uh, we see many of the government initiatives are available, but still uh, these uh, biodiversity factors are going to be there. And moreover, I saw in this uh, uh, sessions, uh, reading, reading some of the reports, uh, the UN uh, National uh, SDG uh, stresses more on this uh, gender equality. 
so this gender uh, equality is being always given a uh, domination phase uh, still we see many women entrepreneurs uh, in india coming up but still we need to have some uh, some of the government regulations to uh, bring more of this uh, rural women entrepreneurship uh, that is what i feel as a woman and this uh, journey of the women entrepreneurship will be coming forward uh, towards the rural entrepreneurship uh, sustainable development goals can also be uh, somewhat achieved and it will be uh, lifting the poverty so basically the women are uh, being sheltered in this poverty line and uh, they are uh, not able to come up through some business issues and the problems so i feel some of these uh, ngos and uh, other people also uh, try to uh, gain the momentum in which the women entrepreneur will try to get encouragement and also this gender bias not only in women entrepreneurship but across the various sectors where the women work and uh, in the biggest uh, positions they hold but still we we see a lot of the gender bias and uh, the positions are not being given to the women so that also the uh, faces of the uh, trying to solve these issues are going to be highly important relating to the climate change uh, the climate uh, we see about this green uh, sustainability green development uh, and the green marketing scenario is also coming towards uh, today scenario so more of the women farmers are going to be uh, given more encouragement relating to the sustainable development this is what i wanted to say uh, in a shorter way all right so uh, can you give certain examples in tamil nadu how uh, various uh, ways the women have been uh, contributing as entrepreneurs to conserve uh, uh, biodiversity so in tamil nadu do you have, do you have uh, any examples yes ma'am uh, we see this uh, self help groups as uh, in tamil we see like magalai suya udavi group which is magalai uh, thittam being adopted and uh, based on this uh, various uh, initiatives have been developed as my research is also was in this area uh, but we see some of the challenges that is being faced by the women uh, in this uh, self help group mode uh, where they feel lot of uh, business being started but however uh, uh, making the marketing of their products uh, like the craft products Uh, or uh, even uh, towards in this covid scenario also many of the uh, companies and the sustainable people are there but uh, uh, marketing the product is going to be a challenge for them and uh, the uh, the capital uh, various companies has to come forward where, where we see the uh, difference but however uh, in tamil nadu there is uh, this sustainability model of the self help groups uh, became a very uh, a brighter one in which it shines this uh, rural entrepreneurs like small uh, people who uh, have this crafts products and uh, they start their uh, small way of their business in their uh, small scale sector which is coming under the uh, ministry of uh, msmes uh, so more of the msme also going to uh, in uh, tamil nadu they give more of the uh, importance to them that is what uh, we see in the practicality applications in tamil nadu ma'am could you throw some light on your research because you said that you had yes. done the- a thesis on some particular topic and can you yes. just discuss in 2 3 yes. minutes more about your yes. research so that others may also be motivated yes. how entrepreneurial sure. research is different than the um, if you are from the basically you have to introduce yourself because i have not introduced you all okay so i'll be uh, asking you to introduce yourself along with your thesis introduction etc okay uh, so i am uh, basically dr pavitra i'm working as uh, assistant professor in bharat institute of higher education and research in chennai tamil nadu uh, so uh, regarding the thesis uh, like uh, i have studied relating to the microfinance area uh, where we i studied relating to the self help group uh, model Uh, which showed some light on these uh, women in the separate uh, Chen- uh, the rural uh, part of chennai uh, which seems like uh, more of these uh, women entrepreneurs going into the line 
and uh, i met them actually personally and uh, they say they seem to form some groups and uh, these groups of the women are trying to mitigate their uh, financial issues so basically they have the positive side like uh, they get the finances and then this uh, through the self help group they are going to uh, build their um, uh, women entrepreneurship and some business like uh, they makes pottery business uh, they make some uh, very uh, small craft uh, business where i saw and uh, they are being uh, very uh, happy towards that but however uh, they also feel some challenges relating to the financial scenario as my research was focusing only on this uh, financial scenario how the loans of the payment and the repayments were there so all these uh, even the banks and financial institutions are going to uh, have this uh, loan purpose so they need to give some uh, way of approach to get uh, these women entrepreneurs in a bigger side uh, that is what is my research has been focused ma'am okay thank you thank you uh, may i invite our next uh, speaker dr shri ranjini mokshipudam are you there doctor yes ma'am i'm here could you just come in the center of the screen sure yes come in. uh ma'am are you able to see my screen you just wait wait hold on Right. Yes. Ask the audience if they can if they can see your screen. Yeah, are you able to see my screen? Others? Yes, ma'am. We are able to see. Right. Okay. Then can I start, ma'am? Yeah. Right. A uh, very good evening to everyone. Myself, I'm Dr. S. Shriranjani Mokshagundam. I'm faculty of management, working in Bangalore, a private college, SJBCMS. and i am a research supervisor in uh, mysore university i am also a certified soft skills trainer as well as nlp practitioner and life coach so yes first of all a uh, very happy international women's day to all the women present here <laughs> yes yes uh, uh, today uh, my topic what i what i have chosen is in the context of uh, international women's day the role of women in conservation of environment yes just to uh, begin with this uh, our un uh, secretary uh, general uh, ban ki moon uh, way back in uh, uh, probably some 12 years back uh, he had given one statement uh that was in like uh, uh, uh they were participating in the earth institute state of uh, planet meeting which was in uh, held at columbia university then he said the world's women they are the key to sustainable development peace as well as security yes so why why did he make such a statement because we all know that women they are the chief resource managers for their families in many parts of the world and even their engagement is there in the remedies for and even for the adaptation of the adaptation to the climate change which is very very much essential so even across the regions wherever we see around the globe and even in the many cultures of the world what we see is what even today what we are witnessing is the women they play critical roles in relation to their natural environment so basically what is happening is often everybody not only even women Uh, they are deeply dependent on the available natural resources it could be say for food or fuel or anything for shelter see or even for shelter what is happening is uh, basically women they are uh, particularly vulnerable to any kind of uh, environmental changes or even any kind of threats whatever we are facing today why is this happening is because a uh, women's workload whatever you see it's often centered on managing all the natural resources uh, uh, for example it could be biodiversity or any kind of ecosystems or any experiences whatever women they are facing or they are experiencing in their daily lives or any kind of perspectives which are essential for the sustainable development policy making basically and also the actions whatever they are seeing at even each and every level 
what is this helping to ease it's 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 uh, taking uh, for a healthy planet for all the generations which are yet to come even our next generations so if we just check women as resource managers that to basically in rural side what's happening see women basically they are just uh, seen as uh, primary caregivers to the children or even to the elderly or to the sick and whole community of men and even other women uh, they try to rely on them so what's happening is basically their traditional and even generational knowledge whatever they have on this biodiversity for example it could be something like the uh, supplies communities it could be with medicines basically i'm speaking about the rural background the nutritional balance or any kind of crop rotation methods they have a better knowledge in comparison with men also see even when we see some kind of natural disasters it could be drought or any kind of erratic rainfall when we see or some kind of severe storms which affect the uh, access to these kind of basic resources uh, what will happen is the lives of women or even their families lives it could be like uh, it could be affected very intensely so what is happening is uh, when we uh, go back to the research studies whatever that have been done in relation to the women as well as the environment uh, they show uh, they show that these natural disasters they are hitting the women basically very disproportionately so what happens in the rural areas is it it tries to all these kind of calamities what will happen is it tries to lower the uh, uh, female life expectancy rates basically and uh, uh, these uh, women are more prone to this and it is killing the women more than uh, men uh, and especially where uh, in the rural parts where the gender equality is very much low we see, we experience such kind of situations and we all know that uh, women they constitute just over half the world's population uh, but women are responsible and uh, uh, they should take care of feeding much of it especially if we uh, check with the rural regions or uh, even of the in the developing countries also women they are producing up from 60 to 80% of food in the developing countries but if we just check uh they are officially they own only some 2% of the land if, uh, on the basis of the research uh, they are worldwide if we just check they officially own some 2% of land in comparison with women uh, this was a research basically done by food and agricultural organization fao and even historical inheritance laws if we check with that or even some customs what what will happen with the, those rural side customs is they are prohibiting the women basically or they are trying to limit the women's direct control over the land they have to manage everything they have to do uh, 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 people will rely on them but they cannot have land in their uh, name what a fate so even when women uh, uh, they are not even able to uh, own the lands or even they are not able to lease lands uh from this what is happening is they are not able to secure any kind of loans or insurance for themselves or uh, they are not able to keep their resources safely so what is happening is uh, this lack of uh, some kind of equitable land rights or uh, 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 these kinds of problems they are facing like they are like a, a major obstacle to any kind of women's empowerment and even for the po poverty alleviation this is helping in poverty alleviation basically if we want to speak about something about the international agreements yes we all know that the international agreements have been made between many countries and these uh, act like a crucial links between basically women as well as the environment uh, but the challenge is there is no action on this there, there have been many agreements made but we don't know what is there actually uh, what is been implemented or not uh, even uh, if we uh, speak way back about in 1979 Uh, we saw there was a convention on the elimination of all forms of dis discrimination against the women uh, say there was uh, even a beijing platform for action uh, which was uh, in 1995 probably some 25 years back 25 to 30 years back uh, which was like the it was an outcome of uh, fourth world conference on women it uh, actually included an entire chapter on women as well as the environment in connection with environment but the thing is uh what happened was it just foreshadowed the different impacts like a, a global warming what it could had been had on uh, men as well as in women and we all know that is still today it is evident across the globe 
and even if we just check about the sustainable development treaty treaties major major you what is happening even you can check about uh, uncd which was in uh, uh, 1992 it tried to produce two kind of conventions uh, one was on uh, 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 biological diversity basically and another one was on even uh, combating the desertification like it was stated somewhere in the uh, uncd document and even that included a specific chapter on gender and it tried to uh, it tried to highlight the important role what women are playing in uh, basically the industrialized countries uh, like they were seen as the sustainable consumers uh, but still the links between the uh, what you can say the women as well as the environment they are really not uh, completely concentrated here in the global south is what i think and even uh, most of the researchers say that uh but if we see the studies which have shown that women in north or uh, you can take like uh, the developed countries they also have some kind of just smaller carbon footprint than men uh, majority of this what is happening is uh, like the green decisions whatever they take at the household level and even for the travel this was uh, like uh, uh, told in uh, some 2007 swedish government report this was actually told and even when you just check about the international agreements whatever you see the worldwide uh, see the women must be equal participants in all the decisions related to their environment this is what all the international agreements try to say uh, because women they demonstrate a greater capacity even as leaders or even say experts educators innovators and the women as well as the um, movements of women they have made like uh, uh, almost the great strides they have made uh while they are trying to preserve as well as protect the resources around them so yes women in the conservation of environment uh, so we all know about the great chipko movement and women uh, who took lead in this uh, chipko movement of india in uh, uh, probably some 40 50 years back in 1970s where what happened was we all know about that but still uh, just a brief uh, thing brief explanation Uh, the activists what they did was uh, all these activists they stopped the felling of trees physically by surrounding or they literally tried to hug the trees they even tried to protect the water sources from the corporate control similarly you must all have been known something called the green belt movement see even that was on the uh, conservation and forestry movement uh, it was in kenya uh, it was uh, even that was also some 40 years back probably in uh, 1977 i guess and even that was also a famous uh, effort which was initiated by women see women around the world they are continually uh, they are uh, yes fighting against the climate change they want to make the sustainable consumption choices and they are trying to even improve their access or even control or even uh, to control over the these kind of resources or even the conservation of the resources mainly uh the main thing is their voices they must be like uh integrated comprehensively into any kind of policies or even any kind of implementation efforts at every stage whatever it has been made for the well being of the even for us and even for our future generations just to quote with an example we all know about the russian environmental activist uh, alexandra koroleva yes we all know what she did to preserve the environment and even to protect the people from the environmental pollution uh, even her uh, we could see the all her approaches like it, they were like tireless and even it is often successful whatever we have seen from her movements and uh, she herself she has devoted much of her life in protecting the uh, pristine environment there in uh, russian federation and uh, uh, the habitats there it included even the wetlands forests or even uh, rivers or the marshes also we could see there after having said all this we still have so many things to discuss so what is the value of women participating even fully or equally in addressing the climate change why should climate change be addressed through a gender lens and what are the gender specific barriers to the participation of women mainly in environmental movements so what is the actual connection between the violence against women and the environment see uh, we are often we all have a question 
So in what ways are these indigenous people? I'm uh, referring to the women. So particularly, why is it they are vulnerable to the climate, climatic changes? Or what is the role of the women in addressing the impacts of the climate change? So we all need to get answers for all these questions. Yes, if you want to check how is the, uh, re what is the relation actually between the efficiency and women? One thing, uh, if at all women are provided with, say, some kind of incentives, uh, what would be the effects? This is what I just want to discuss. See, according to the researches made, if at all women, they are given uh, secure land rights, what will happen is, the research says that there will be greater incentive for higher production rates, basically. And women will be motivated to make use of the best technologies. They can increase the cultivation and even they can make long term investments when compared to men. Even when you just check with the uh, credit or uh, input access, if you just try to uh, uh, give them, provide them, it would definitely enhance the women's ability so that they can even raise their production by improving the access to any kind of credit given to them. It could be in, if, in, if it is in rural background, you could uh, say about the agri agricultural credit. And women, what they will, it will uh, do is, uh, they will uh, try to increase the women's independence also. And they can even have access to the outputs or any kind of savings or even uh, cash flow. It could be increased for the reinvestments basically. And if you just check the efficiency of resource, see uh, many of the studies even uh, uh, they have shown that there is a possibility that women use resources more efficiently than men. And uh, this could mean anything like uh, from making a productive use of loans of money, whatever they have earned, and even the ability of women wherein they can achieve higher values of output is what I mean to say. And even if you want to check about the gender specific knowledge or any kind of talent pool, what does it, what effect does it have is like many women, they have specific and often greater knowledge about anything. If you just uh, 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 see the studies in about the research in rural background, they have more knowledge than men about certain crops as well as some kind of planting uh, patterns also. Uh, if at all women, uh, you include them as farm managers, a more diverse or any kind of talented informed pool would be created. This is what many kind of studies are saying. And even women empowerment or uh, you can even speak about the bargaining power. See, providing women basically with the opportunity, as I told, even to own lands, it will, in, uh, it will increase their sense of empowerment. And so that even women, even they can try to assert themselves more in various situations. It could be, they could be included even in policy creation in uh, any kind of uh, government schemes, whatever we see today. So if I want to speak something about a feminist radical ecosystem, uh, it has to try, it should try to focus on the access of the resources, uh, basically, which is based on class or ethnicity, but should not consider any kind of gender roles. Uh, what will happen is uh, the feminist uh, political ecology, whatever is there, they must try to address a few concerns. See, uh, one should know the women's multiple roles. Uh, they could be the producers or reproducers or any kind of uh, uh, consumers. These things, if you just try to combine uh, with the roles of household or any kind of community roles or in any kind of landscape, uh, what will happen is the uh, specialized science which is there, it tries to concentrate on one aspect what happens is mostly it drops women's ability because they are just trying to integrate it with only the daily experiences whatever the women face and uh, we see that women are worldwide uh, uh, most probably they are responsible for just providing the basic household daily needs and what will happen is women from from this kinds of perception from the uh, perception from the society what is happening is women they are suffering uh, more from the lack of uh, subsistence or sustenance and even ecology and health they also have everyday or any kind of ordinary aspects that are responsive to uh, uh, from the from a viewpoint of even fe feminist viewpoint if you see 
uh, even though they have become more technical highly technical in comparison with men but we see it as like just the ordinary aspects and we also see that there is lots of feminist criticism and uh, if we just want to summarize about this there is inequity of participation even abuse of women or uh, this is something like a uh, universal assumption and even we use uh, the uh, gendered uh, metaphors and sometimes what happens is the lack of women's everyday experience in the ways of learning uh, is mainly the cause for this and even fem uh, feminist political ecologists whatever is happening they have discovered that the environmental management research is mostly on women but sometimes what is happening is uh, it, uh, it it usually neglects the uh, uh, men's dominant roles in environmental resources management and they try to pressurize the women and uh, if we want to check even about the eco feminism what is happening is uh, uh, we can see that some essential factors would be there they could be like something like uh, the gendered knowledge uh the way in which they try to find access to scientific or any kind of ecological knowledge but it is structured by gender again uh, we will consider this in the part of gender feminism and even the gender uh, environmental rights and responsibilities uh, what uh, these this these points what it will include is the differential access by men and women Uh, wherein they try to uh, have uh, some kind of claims into legal or any kind of de facto claims to lands and resources also and we have gendered politics and the grassroots activism which includes an examination of women within and even as the leaders if we, if we see them as uh, in the environmental movements so breaking the uh, glass ceiling yes we know many female environmentalists of india see environmentalists are basically we know that who work towards the uh, betterment of our environment and we know there are many famous personalities women personalities uh, who have just lobbied for environment protection yes and even when common men like us though uh, uh, like we are uh, we are like sleeping peacefully and we are just caring for our own benefit but these people many environmentalists they have worked for a greater cause just than thinking about them or any kind of selfish needs they want to save the environment and they have impacted all of us but uh, even though there are many uh, female or feminine environmentalists in india at how many of them can we actually name how many female environmentalists do you know who have contributed to india although they are less in number but uh, they are still valuable yes, the famous personalities we all know about them uh, basically the indian environmentalists we should never forget uh, first one is uh, gauri devi uh, i just told you about the chipko movement and this is uh, taught almost in all of the schools and uh, everyone in this chipko movement we all remember about the sundarlal bahuguna its leader but uh, does anyone know about its female aspect which was started this was actually started in 1974 under the leadership of gauri devi she organized the women to hug the trees and prevent their cutting basically and uh, then she was the head of mahila mangal dal at that small village called reni and uh, the day uh, when those people the maybe the lumber men uh, they were uh, to cut the trees she tried to lead the women some almost there were 27 to 30 women uh, uh, they uh, gauri devi she led those women to confront them initially just she just tried to talk something about it uh, but the thing is uh, uh, it only resulted in abusing and threatening then they just uh, decided to hug these trees and protect them from being felled as who doesn't know about um, uh, medha patkar she is also a popular environmentalist and she is known for her nba we all know about that the narmada bachao andolan and this was a powerful mass movement against the construction of a large dam on the narmada river and it was uh, actually it was a multi crore project 
and it would have uh, according to some researchers it would have displaced more than 3 lakh people and the next one is we know about uh, sunita Nair, the director general, general of uh, cse uh, center for science and environment and even we know that she has published uh, down to earth <laughs> even she she is also working from uh, almost uh, 40 years and uh, she was actually basically she was working with anil agarwal who was also a, a prominent environmentalist uh, uh, way back some 40 years back and uh, she just uh, tried to uh, chair this uh, tiger task force of conservation uh, probably 15 years back in 2005 and she is also a member of uh, pm's council for climate change and even the uh, uh, national ganga river basin authority and she even in 2005 2008 and 9 she was actually uh, featured on the world's 100 public uh, intellectual list that was uh, given by the us journal uh, foreign policy and she has also been awarded with uh, Padma Shri also. And uh, many of her research interests, they are like on global democracy, uh, wherein she is trying to emphasize on the climate change and even the local democracy, uh, uh, basically concentrating on the uh, forest resource management and even the water related issues. Again, one more famous personality, Maneka Gandhi. Um, uh, she's the uh, wife of a famous uh, Indian politician, uh, Sanjay Gandhi. But she's also again known for some other different reasons. See, she was a, like a animal uh, rights leader and she's all, uh, also an environmentalist. She has also founded uh, the People for Animals, the largest organization for animals welfare in India, basically. She tried to believe in the uh, word called Ahimsa. And she has also anchored many TV pro one TV program called uh, Heads and Tiles and she has also authored a book under the same name. And uh, even Vandana Shiva, yes, even we all know about him. She's a Delhi-based environmentalist and even a eco-feminist. She's like a uh, she was a Gandhi follower, and she's also well known for her uh, uh, some kind of say you can say like uh, proletarian efforts, uh, so that she she uh, we can protect forests. And even she was organizing the women's networks and even to conserve the local biodiversity. And even just I have named a, a few uh, Indian environmentalists. We all know about very other uh, many other environmentalists. Um, she could be uh, Amrita Devi, uh, who was uh, like for uh, 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 Bishnoi's struggle to save the Kajri trees. Uh, Aruna Roy, we know, and uh, she was for the uh, MKSS scheme, um, uh, basically the Mazdoor Kisan Shakti Sanghatan. She was for that. And uh, for the Bhopal uh, uh, gas tragedy, we know the Ch uh, Champa Devi Shukla and even Rashida B. And uh, for the Silent Valley, famous uh, poet, we know that uh, Sugata Kumari and Tulsi Gowda, uh, Salu Mardatima Kafam Karnataka, we know many, many more. So just to conclude, uh, we all know that women in different parts of the world, they're actively involved in saving the environment. Uh, but still there is some kind of uh, limited recognition for her uh, uh, contribution see uh, uh, basically if you can just make the sustainable development as a goal of the global community then the role of uh, women in achieving this has to be uh, underscored so even the millennium development goals it includes both the gender equality as well as the environmental sustainability and involving women in protecting the environment would uh, definitely help the societies to develop the sense of responsibility. And uh, uh, in, uh, in fact, we can just try to maintain a good balance between the humans as well as the resources of our Earth, Mother Earth. And many people who are working towards the betterment of the environment, they are going unrecognized today. But uh, those people, they are playing key role in the conservation and even for the promotion of the environment. So therefore, uh, what I would like to say is uh, protection cannot be done without in the involvement of women even uh, the, from the planning stage or in the training uh, basically for the promotion and the values for conservation as well as the uh, environmental promotion. Yes. With this uh, I would just like to come to the last part of my presentation. Probably I have taken much of your time. Sorry. <laughs> Not at all. Thank you for that.
Yeah. Uh, thank you for giving us so pertinent deliberation. We really uh, were uh, requiring that from any one of the speakers. Of course, uh, all of them have added value to this uh, discourse. But your was uh, absolutely telling us in a way that international recognition is there to this cause of climate change. And a lot of, you know, percolation of finance, budget auditing is also there. But point is that at the very grassroot level, if a women group or community is working towards certain goals of climate change, they are facing some kind of, you know, uh, hurdles, hazards, or you may say, even uh, uh, you have uh, told us uh, about uh, deforestation and how this has been tackled uh, by these uh, women entrepreneurs to make space, to create space for their sustenance. Uh, even though they have been obstructed or violated or sometimes even been vo uh, violently uh, stopped. Uh, thank you for creating a, lot, a beautiful, uh, you know, community blueprint also and how the collective consciousness has been uh, slowly and gradually uh, progressing towards uh, intergovernmental coordination. Uh, but still there is one little query with the, uh, from you that uh, indeed you have talked about how to save earth and uh, to save uh, human species some way uh, with uh, your you know uh, eco management if done properly uh, but do you think uh, at a large scale are we really educating our students especially the student uh, crowd as, as, and you know the last two years have been a great gap uh, because we have been holding webinars online virtually and uh, do you think that st this generation uh, is really bothered because uh, there is a very you know uh, prominent uh, uh, example of even war that is going on to destroy mother earth so i think you have uh, skipped two factors real factors that are hovering over the student mind one is the war and another is pandemic here you can say something uh, how our student uh, has to be motivated by fraternity or by some other way um, ma'am, the thing is basically uh, they know that that we have to conserve our uh, mother earth whether it could be the water resource or pollution or any kind of issues that is like really hampering our mother earth but the thing is i don't know we are trying to even uh, tell our students what will happen in 2020 10 years back a decade back we were telling what what will happen in 2020 what will what would happen in 2030 we are telling about the un sdgs the sustainable development goals what is it what are we aiming to but still i don't know what the what is the problem with all the people or the citizens what is happening is they know what should be done but the thing is they are not implementing the same thing is ha happening with the even the government schemes also so this is what i feel actually we all know what should be done but we are not doing uh, probably there should be some other methods to even uh, motivate the students this is what uh, students fraternity this is what actually i feel ma'am i think here uh, mr anna can throw some light because he is dealing with uh, young uh, people and or you may say the youth of uh, in a large scale because he sees every uh, kind of person is involved uh, with whatever background and it is youth so please uh, mr Nan, uh, could you intervene yeah so uh, the organization that i'm connected with both uh, green army international where i started my environmental uh, climate action or whatever it is or uh, bring back green both the organizations are involved in something known as climate education. Climate education is a mandatory thing that the coming generation should be aware of because, uh, for instance, if uh, climate education is uh, not given to the coming generation, what happens is that they will not get to know of the major things that is happening. For instance, People should know. People will be learning in their uh, school days about um, climate change, uh, global warming, or related activities. But what is 
uh, what is the issue is that they will not be aware about uh, what are the upcoming reports. Uh, for instance, there are a number of uh, international organizations like United Nations, UNDP, uh, as uh, the early speaker pointed out. Um, uh, there are uh, activities that has been uh, like Millennium Development Goals or Sustainable Development Goals, where such issues were pointed out. But the coming generation, including people around me, do not know what is what is happening. For instance, an organization like me, as uh, an organization like uh, ours, were forced to do a one-month-long campaign in a national level to sensitize about UNEA 5.2, because people are not aware about any policies or any resolutions that has been coming up. So each and everything we are about to like spoon feed people. See, this is happening. You know, UNEA has come up, uh, come up with a new policy. You have to ban plastic. A country like India has banned plastic n number of times. Since my childhood, uh, single-use plastics were banned. But the organization, our organization is connected with Center for Environment Science Studies to again study about single-use plastic. You see the contradictory. So climate education is very needed as we talk about uh, sex education or comprehensive sexuality education. We have to teach people that uh, we have to we have to teach people about alternatives. We have to teach people about disaster management, its mitigation, its adaptation. Unless and until we teach people about this, they will, there will not be any major changes happening. We have to teach people about uh, sustainable menstruation. We have to teach people everything. Then only there will be a pertaining change happening. For instance, uh, when I joined Green Army International, the task allotted to me as a fellow, I joined after my post-graduation, then I was to work there with uh, Chuanjo Municipal Corporation as project coordinator. So what we what I was doing is that we, uh, we have, like since it is connected with the local self-governing institution, we had several units in schools. Uh, there will be a unit like uh, like NSS or a nature club. There will be a unit called as Green RB unit in every school in Trivandrum, where activities will be like a month long activity, uh, an year long activity as an extracurricular activity will be there, where every important days will be observed. So uh, such extra uh, climate education should be an activity oriented. It shouldn't be another curriculum like Max or physics or chemistry because they, they, they what along with theoretical knowledge, what they should inculcate in them, themselves is uh, a practical knowledge. They have to implement the knowledge, they have to implement the technique they get from our education or from our training, whatever it is, to implement in their day to day habits. Then only a change will happen. Uh, that doesn't mean that uh, people. Uh, who are in my generation or who are in uh, the uh, 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 elder generation are not to be in, included in the activity. Uh, Bring Back Green, when uh, uh, the current organization I'm working with, uh, uh, what we did is that uh, we did three uh, um, uh, capacity building program with uh, be it colleges so as to train them to teach students about climate education. We made them to make a curriculum. Uh, through that, we uh, had a, a good uh, amount of uh, action-oriented curriculum so as to have uh, interactive activities. So this sort of, you know, inclusive activities, multidisciplinary activities, in accordance with uh, our government bodies, we have to work with government bodies, we have to try implementing it. Uh, in 2019, we met the then Education Minister of Kerala to implement that, but sooner uh, the pandemonium came, we were unable to implement that. Last, last uh, uh, On last Environment Day, we met the newly appointed um, uh, Honorable Higher Education Council Minister so as to implement that, and now it is implementing for the upcoming uh, academic year. Uh, this. Uh, climate education will be there in schools. So this is what we have to do. But that shouldn't be an added uh, curse to the teachers because we know that teachers are very busy. Teachers have lots and lots of activities to do. The this in charge of climate education will be given to yet another permanent teacher who might be teaching math, physics, chemistry, English, Hindi, whatever. So it, it shouldn't be an added curse to the teachers, but it should be very, you know, interactively thought interactively dealt in all the education and higher education institutions. That is the only way out. 
sensitization, observation of days, and proper education about the climate, uh, climate and environment is the only way out. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Anak, please uh, stay here only. Don't go. Uh, with the last question to sum up, I would like to uh, ask to Pavitra. Uh, Pavitra, are you there? J. Pavitra? Yes, ma'am. You're an educationist or you're from academics. There's a very, you know, simple question for our youth or attendees. Yes, ma'am. That uh, they are, uh, Mr. Anag is uh, talking about climate education. And we have uh, in our, uh, you know, academic syllabus, there's a uh, paper or you may say a module with the nomenclature environmental science. I think all across India, this environmental science, EVS, yeah. uh, as a subject is taught. Now, what's the difference to all these? Uh, can you all three of you can say a line about it? Like what is the difference? Why we are lacking behind it? Our youth is not at all concerned uh, unless he's a philanthropist or altruistic. Then only uh, he or she is involved. Rest of the youth is only into, you know, women culture, casanovic, and they just want to flaunt with, uh, in whatsoever, uh, you know, uh, other context. Why there is a difference? Why there is not that kind of uh, force in EVS or in climate education? What can you say about one one line? If you can say, then we'll sum up. Uh, I feel that uh, okay. in school uh, uh, sessions we are having this CBS, and as we go to the college side, the importance and this uh, environmental and the climate change are avoided, ma'am. Uh, so in the curriculum alignment, we need to have this uh, uh, one uh, focus has to be given. And uh, even uh, this uh, woman and gender uh, focus is also whatever the discipline is being there uh, in the college and the curriculum focus on. But still, we need to have some part of uh, curriculum and the syllabus uh, being developed, uh, especially for this uh, environmental and climate change. Uh, and uh, we need to uh, make the youth to understand about this gender uh, uh, issues, challenges, also, how this has been uh, being uh, facing a challenge for this uh, environmental sustainability. That is what I feel. Uh, and then this uh, environmental science is uh, mostly focusing on science. And uh, so all the arts and other uh, disciplines uh, do not uh, have this focus. And uh, they uh, shift their focus in their lines. So just like uh, to know some knowledge has to be given inside the curriculum. That is what I feel yeah, thank you, Jeeva Veta. Thank you thank for your you. Uh, thought. Uh, next, um, Dr. Shri Ranjini, if you have anything to say with regard to this difference, uh, or can uh, there can be some certain kind of improvement in our syllabus? How it no, can yes, be <laughs> oh, well, certainly we would uh, actually government would come up with so many schemes, and even in our syllabus we would be having so many things. Uh, for example, what should be done is everything will go into their brains, they'll write in the exams, they'll pass and they'll go. But the thing is, the main thing is implementation, what I feel. See, it could actually start from the individual level. Uh, for example, I could save some water. I can turn off the lights when not in use. All these things, even though they see in their books and even uh, on many charts in the school on the school walls. But the thing, what I feel is, Individually, the, everybody should be responsible. This is what actually I feel, ma'am, basically. Even though probably it could be for many a reasons that people would be selfish or they might be having any other things uh, which, I, which, I, uh, which they prioritize over all these uh, climatic or any kind of environmental issues. But the thing is, it should uh, start from an individual level to implement it at, it at a greater uh, level. This is what I feel, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Rana. Do you have any line of thought in this perspective? Mr. Anand, can you listen to us? Yeah, yeah. So what I personally think is that, of course, uh, we are having several uh, education, as uh, uh, the host said. We do have several uh, um, changes happening, like 
in my school days also i have been taught uh, uh, something known as environment science in my primary days and even in my graduation uh, era um, as per ugc's order in the second semester there was a compulsory paper called environment science but what we the what we study there or what we were taught there is not about uh, the lifestyle changes that a person should bring uh, but uh, what happens is ha what happens there is small uh, you know uh, uh, the uh, basics of plastics all those are not taught there uh, students or uh, young generation should know wh how plastic is made what are plastics what are the types of plastic what is disaster how to mitigate disaster how to adapt disaster what are single use plastic what is what has been taught what has to be taught there and uh, uh, what are the alternatives for every single use plastic? For instance, if a person has been taught that, why do you want to use straw? Uh, see, for a, a two minute juice, do you really need something known as straw? Straw is not actually needed. It does, like, everything has its, uh, we have to, for instance, a straw takes 500 years to decay. Uh, sanitary napkin takes 500 years to decay. Yeah, where uh, we follow a, a, a education curriculum where menstruation is only taught to women, we have to uh, we have to understand that menstruation is very is uh, nothing uh, or that is to be tabooed off, and sustainable menstruation practice is something that is needed. If sustainable menstruation practice is very normalized, very recently in, in Kerala, as part of Women's Day, several colleges. Uh, started uh, doing campaigns on menstrual cup. So these things has to be familiar, familiarized to young generation, menstrual cup, period panties, sustainable menstrual campaigns. All these has to be taken up and all these has to be normalized in campuses, discussions on this and adding to that every important week. It's not June 5 and environment day. Uh, on, uh, uh, on March 15, uh, the United Nations uh, social work day is going gonna, gonna to be ob observed and as part of uh, social work day the theme for social work day is environment social work which is a completely new branch of social work uh, in msw departments so all these things has to be normalized in every sector it has to be normalized we still stick on to the ecofeminism of vandana shiva ecofeminism of vandana shiva is not has to be discussed there are several other theories several other contemporaries that has to be discussed so it has to be we have to relearn we have to unlearn and we have to learn new things that is to, that is the technique that has to be uh, practice for teaching new things thank you mr anag um uh, is uh, prayanka solanki are you there prayanka solanki yes ma'am i'm here yeah I'm, please I'm, I'm turn on your here. camera and i would like you to, i would like to invite you to please uh, Honor all our speakers with a token of thanks and acknowledgement. Uh, yes, I would love to do that, ma'am. Uh, I'm a scholar, and my, my name is Priyanka Suranki, and it's been such a wonderful time listening to such honorable speakers. You've got to learn so much in regard with uh, the all the issues that women actually face and they do have to talk about and we're so thankful that we have people and you know such uh, uh, wonderful thoughts that you guys put up and I'm sure if this goes forward in the society and you know there comes a change it will be one kind of a gift for the women on the International Women's Day. It's, it's been very a learning process. It's been like a very good uh, time that we've had and we've learned a lot from the whole webinar. Thank uh, you so Deepa, much. Thank you. Thanks once more. Thank you. Deepa, would you like to comment or any um, queries? Um, Ma'am, first of all, I would like to congratulate you on the eve of International Women's Day. You are the lady icon who reflect vibrant energy that so that we can follow you. And it was a, a very uh, memorable moment for all of us as we all ladies are growing moving to the next step or here uh, uh, <coughs> i should continue in english only uh, it was wonderful and i believe that uh, it should be continued and every time i would be a part of it 
undoubtedly and uh, as i have uh, asked you insist you before also kindly uh, arrange some offline program so we would get the privilege and and the opportunity to interact with you personally it all depends on the speakers if they are uh, very much uh, you know eager to come to the yes. lake city the one the world's number one tourist city i would definitely um, extend uh, invitation and uh, but uh, they have to bear the finance of traveling <laughs> no matter no matter it doesn't matter for us if if it is a, if it is an opportunity to meet to you that is, nothing not, nothing uh, matters so uh, are you all listening to our uh, attendee deepa rastogi she is actually <laughs> dr deepa rastogi she is uh, in the ministry of education uh, doing as a research scholar and um, i i think she has really uh, float a relevant thought for all of you that you all come to udaipur see how the conservation is being done here how the entrepreneurs in the tribal belt are taking up the ventures and startups to uh, go back to green uh, and to have climate uh, protection uh, because it would be an experiential learning especially for dr shri ranjini you can bring your group of students here please do inform sure ma'am we shall plan in the future right and priyanka is has to say something yes priyanka i would like to add ma'am that today we have spoken about so many topics we got to hear listen to so many things which we actually need the tribal and the local people to be discussed we need to discuss it to them so i think it will be wonderful if we could do it live and you know go practically explaining people and we think that environment related topics like it's a very i at first when i heard of the thing i would i couldn't relate to it like what are we going to do but then it seems like a small evs topic but then it has a lot of impact uh, on the whole uh, like listening to all of you it felt like oh my it has so much of relation to do with uh, women or you know it, it, it affects women in a many many different ways it does affect women and it would be See, wonderful <laughs> if you all if you all take initiative to land up in udaipur physically naturally we will get the tribal group also to interact with you and there will be an exchange the how they are retreating to traditional adaptations of uh, going to green and uh, cultivations uh, some kind of you know that spirit of climate uh, protection so please uh, all of you three uh, are in the lead and uh, i could not bring all my other group a uh, native indigenous people here online it was a sudden short notice program and uh, do inform whenever you are coming to depur so that we i can uh, uh, take uh, you to to visit to certain areas where there are such work are going on right yes quickly uh, ma'am we shall plan josna josna are you there you want to say something anybody else jyoti you know they are all uh, hesitant i don't know why do they shy from all these um, uh, communication there's somebody she is writing just now received the information my women's day wishes to you all jyoti hello ma'am <laughs> good evening yeah. yes yes Ma- jyoti yeah I am Jyoti from uh, Tamil Nadu, ma'am. Just now I received the uh, communication about the uh, webinar or this uh, uh, meeting. I think. Uh, sorry, ma'am, I couldn't join a little earlier. But uh, anyway, I am much happy to join you all, and uh, I am very much happy to wish you all a very happy Women's Day, ma'am. It's my uh, pleasure to wish you all, ma'am. And uh, my uh, simple message uh, to uh, the society or to the Uh, professors group us somehow we must uh, make the children to understand what is the social evil they are going to face or they are faced and how to be very much cautious towards those things ma'am whether we have a uh, visaga or posh or anything or uh, somehow the kids are trapped by that ma'am that's my um, heaviness that i cannot express ma'am somehow i am uh, educating uh, the kids this way here uh by saying all those things and uh, this is my grievance uh, how we are going to get rid of all this in our nations this is my uh, 
uh, sharing ma'am because i don't know the uh, just of the meeting uh, today's uh, celebration or meeting but i've got a chance to share all this to the learned professors and the wisdom carriers ma'am thank you thank you so much for allowing me to share my views ma'am thank you ma'am once again uh, happy, happy women's day ma'am do you want to say something in hindi vishali so finally uh, i would like to say goodbye and we are waiting and looking forward to your visit and bring good opportunities for us with your visit and will power okay thank you namaskar namaskar ma'am i'm thank you so much thank you, thank you once again once again all the ladies i wish you all very happy women say may you all get lots of happiness and blessings so that you may get a better tomorrow onwards yeah uh, right now i'm coming ladies. from the day long lots of uh, women's day programs where i performed the dances and poetry and all uh, and jashi ma'am uh, my dear jashi ma'am ko batana chahungi ki main hindi poetess hu to ओकेजन्स के लिए स्पेशली पोएम्स लिखती हूँ फिर उनको आ, इस पर्पज से आज का दिन काफी खास रहा तो अभी आप थोड़ा सा दो ना दीजिए क्योंकि हमारे एक वही है जो आपका पिलर को होल्ड करे हुए <laughs> जरूर जो आज आज को टारगेट करके जो पोएम लिखी है वही सुना देती हूँ आपको जस्ट जस्ट मिनट व्हाट्सएप खोलू क्योंकि मैं पोएम्स गूगल ऑडियो के माध्यम से बनाती हूँ तो जो आज बनाई थी वही आपको सुनाती हूँ ये है बाबा मुझको आ जाने दो बाबा मुझको आ जाने दो जन्म सफल कर जाऊंगी मुझको भी बस्ता दिलवाना मैं भी पढ़ने जाऊंगी दिन दिन आगे बढ़ती जाऊं मेहनत करती पढ़ती जाऊं तुम्हारे सर का मैं बोझ उठाऊं तुम्हारा हाथ तुम्हारा कंधा तुम्हारी आंखें बन जाऊ सुख दुख में पिता संबल हूं मैं बोझ तुम्हारा मैं ढोऊंगी यदि पढ़ू मैं एरोनोटिकल साइंस कल्पना चावला बन जाऊंगी अंतरिक्ष का ध्रुव तारा बन तुम्हारा नाम चमकाऊंगी यदि भेजोगे खेल कूद में मीरा सिंधु मिताली हुबा दास बन जाऊंगी वसुंधरा भस्म को भाल सजाकर विजय परचम लहराऊंगी यदि पढ़ू मैं कला विषय कलेक्टर एस तहसीलदार एडवोकेट कुछ भी बन जाऊंगी हे पित्र मुझे संरक्षण दो स्नेह विश्वास समर्पण दो अनुमति प्रोत्साहन स्त्री धन दो नन्ही चिड़िया नापले आसमान अपने डैनो से पिता बंधु समर्थन दो उड़ान भरू विश्व विजय करूं जगदम्ब का मैं प्रतिबंब बनू रखू तीन नेत्र मैं भस्म करूं यदि दुष्चेष्ट कहीं कोई देखू अन्याय नहीं अब कभी अन्याय नहीं अब सहू कभी अबला दुखिया अब रहू नहीं हे नर तत्व अब ले लो शपथ नहीं बहे कही अब मेरा रक्त मैं भारत मां मैं वसुंधरा मैं सीता सावित्री कृष्ण सखा नारी नहीं फौलाद हूं मैं दुर्गा काली रणचड्डी की औलाद हूं मैं इस पात नहीं पिघलता अंगारों से पंच तत्व महाभूत महामाया शक्ति अज्ञात हूं मैं महामाया शक्ति अज्ञात हूं मैं होप यू ऑल लिसन या या इट वाज वेरी नाइस एंड प्लीज कीप द गुड वर्क गोइंग इट वाज वेरी नाइस इट इज द ब्लेसिंग ऑफ माय पेरेंट्स दैट आई एम एन एक्सपर्टाइज इन इंग्लिश एज वेल माय ड्यू टू माय मदर्स ब्लेसिंग आई आल्सो रिसाइट एंड वर्स इन संस्कृत एज वेल इन हिंदी वेदर आई हैव नॉट रिसीव्ड 